vamos a empezar. Vamos a empezar y muy buenos días, buenos días. ¿Cómo están todos? ¿Están bien? Bien, bien, bien. ¿Sí? Más o menos, ok. Uh -huh. uh, bueno, a ver, uh, vamos a repasar. We're going to review uh, a couple of things that you had for homework to see if you had any questions on that. And uh -huh. after that, we're going to practice a lot with this pronoun placement business. Why does why do those little words flip around to different places? And it's kind of, a, I want to say, one of those can of worms situations. What we want to do is we're going to take some of the situations where pronouns flip around, and then we'll take another batch of a different uh, situation. Uh, well, maybe this week, maybe next week, depending on how quickly we get through everything. So mostly it's a pronoun kind of day. Uh, Marilyn, Marilyn when, when you do that, mm -hmm. and if if you can incorporate it, you know, today, good. If not, you know, maybe maybe next week. But can you do more, a more broad review of the command structure? See, sí. see, sí. yeah. Uh, my thought is we'll probably really get into the command thing next week with maybe just a little preview for it today. Um, but if everything goes swimmingly fast, then we may just flat out get to it today. See. Sí. Um, okay. A ver. Uh, we're going to open with a funny, uh, funny quick clip. Uh... Yeah, funny, quick, quick video clip, not related really to anything, but just a little reminder of why that little me gusta uh, phrase can be dangerous if you use it to talk about human beings. <laughs> uh, and this is cute and clever and not too long. So we're going to take this because it's fresh and new and kind of fun as our opener. Aquí. Ah, eh, uh, this is a, a husband-wife combo. They do a cute job of presenting things. Uh, I want to refresh that. Okay. Ay, qué divertido. Me gusta tu prima. Me gusta tu prima. No, no, no. Uh, cuidado, cuidado. Uh, Got to be careful when you use gustar to talk about human beings. And notice what they've got underneath it. Me gusta tu prima. I like your cousin romantically. Uh, so, me gusta tu prima, when we put a human being in with me gusta, um, it will generally, in most situations, carry the idea of, I think your cousin is hot. He's saying this to his wife. <laughs> Can you imagine saying to your spouse, I think your cousin is hot stuff. I, me gusta tu prima, I'm attracted to your cousin. Okay. El pobre, poor guy. ¿Qué? What? <laughs> yeah, and that's the reaction. Go, huh? <laughs> ¿Te gusta tu prima? ¿Qué? What? Ojo, ten mucho cuidado usando gustar cuando hablas de personas, porque literalmente significa que te atrae. Ah, que te atrae, that that person attracts you, is attractive to you. You know, unless you're using it in the sense of, you know, I like an actor, I like a musician. <laughs> That kind of person is okay as a general uh, thing. But yeah, usually gustar with people most of the time means there's, there, ooh, that person's a magnet for you. Okay. Y eso te puede meter en problemas. Es mejor decir que me cae muy bien. O me cae muy bien. They fall on me well. I know that sounds weird, but that's a way to say you like a person just in a general sense, not. Uh, romantic attraction, why? See, ¿Sí? me cae bien. Or es agradable. O es agradable. Uf, entonces lo siento. Me cae muy bien tu prima. Es agradable. Ah, sí, eso es. So just, it always helps for us to see a little reminder of, uh, and what helps really is seeing her reaction to that. ¿Qué? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because that's how somebody will feel. Okay. A ver. 
onward and upward. Uh, I want to move on and see uh, if you had any questions on the market video, which I thought was a really nicely done video. Um, ah, okay. And en el mercado, sí. Uh, Michelle uh, hizo un video, she made a video, hizo un video de, de, de ir de compras uh, para, para comida, sí, uh, pa, para ver la comida en un mercado. Uh, I had alguna pregunta. Was there any question you had about that? Did all of it make sense? Or was there any little hitch hang up, any question you had there? Well, I'll, I wrote down three things that I was just kind of wanted to ask about um, kind of the structure of mm -hmm. these. Yeah, that's exactly the kind of question I'm hoping for. Okay. So the first one I forgot to write down that kind of the time place it was in, but, but I'll just tell you what it was. So um, she was asking about the bananas mm -hmm. and she wanted the um, the greenest bananas. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, see. Okay, so what I didn't get, the, the, the phrase she used was el mas verde que tenga. And what I was kind of thrown by was why they used tenga rather than like Viene, sí, perfecto, perfecto, perfecto. Uh, y aquí tenemos, sí, este del, no, son los, son los mangos. Uh, bien, sí, uh, este verde, so, the thing she was right talking, there. ah, yeah. bien, sí, eso es, momentito, sí. It's perfecto. And if I put it up here, uh, I won't have to retype it. Ah, bien, perfecto. Okay. Y que me, y, y que más tiene plátano, pero que, es, pero que esté verde, but that it might be uh, green. So she did not want them fully ripe. Okay. Es verde, es verde. Ah. Uh, Un color con ser es verde o los plátanos son verdes indica el color normal, ¿ok? Pero estar verde indica a uh, madurez, uh, maturity meaning ripeness, yeah. So something that might be green, meaning she doesn't want them super ripe. Me da, give me. This is a normal way to ask somebody to give something to you. Me da el, el más verde que tenga. Give me the greenest banana that you might have. Tenga uh. there is not tiene. Uh, you would expect it, to, but notice, you know it comes from tener, don't you? Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is one of the clues of Spanish to think about. You've got a verb that tenga, you think, well, that sounds wrong, but wow, I know tengo means I have. So it must be from tener. Somebody has something, but tenga, what does that mean? The tenga is what they call a subjunctive. And when she asks, give me the greenest, uh, meaning the least ripe that you have, that indicates, I don't know what you got in your stores. I don't know what you got in your stock. Uh, the, the greenest that you might have. Um, so she's talking about an indefinite and iffy situation. Maybe everything he's got is fully ripe. She doesn't know. Uh, so because she's thinking in that framework of the greenest you might have on your shelves, she uses subjunctive. And people will use what looks like a funny form <laughs> to you. 
And the funny form in many cases might be this subjunctive. But notice when when you recognize that tenga sounds like tango, quite often, even if you don't know the tense, you know, of the verb, you know the general verb it comes from looks close enough to something you've used in the past. And you can, when you're listening, just hang on to that information to still get the big picture. Okay. Yeah, I got, I, I, I definitely, definitely got the picture, but, and now you've explained kind of the context of why, why maybe using subjunctive. I know I wouldn't in a hundred years have come up with using subjunctive. It was just, you know, give me what you have. Right. Uh, okay. So here are a couple of other examples of where you might potentially hear something like that. And you might kind of be able to guess what the verb, uh, what verb it comes from, because it'll sound close enough to something you truly know. But it'll also indicate this iffy uh, kind of twilight zone land we call subjunctive. So just so uh -huh. you know, subjunctive means we don't really know if this thing exists. So in that particular video, she doesn't really know if he's got any green bananas. He might have all fully ripe. That's why she uses it. But another situation where that kind of thing structure might be used because it might come up is somebody's looking to hire. Okay, somebody. Uh, somebody needs, uh, somebody needs an assistant who can answer the phones and knows more than one language. So you say, Hey, I'm looking for somebody who speaks Spanish. Uh, I'm looking for an assistant. Busco a un, asi busco un asistente que hable español. Que hable, no habla. No mm. se dice, people don't say, busco un asistente que habla español. They'll phrase it generally as, busco un asistente que hable español. Why hable with an E at the end? I know it comes from hablar, but the ending sounds wrong. Because I'm looking for assistant who might, speak Spanish. And I don't know if there's anybody out there looking for work. I don't know if there's an applicant who fits that requirement yet. And because I don't know if that person exists, they use what sounds like a funny or wrong uh, uh, formation of that verb you do know, hablar. You expect it to be habla, but it comes down as hable. And you say, well, were they just lazy? Did they just pronounce that wrong? No, it is ali. Um, another, uh, but it's because, again, that action is something that is kind of iffy. We don't know if it really exists. For situations where we don't know if the action of that verb really is a real thing, a part of reality, they will use what they call subjunctive, which means they use what sounds like the wrong form. As a matter of fact, it will sound like the same form as a command. We'll get into that next week. Mm. Um, but another example where that could come up, somebody says, you know, you're having a disagreement uh, about where to go or what to do. And somebody looks at, at you and says, well, do whatever you want, right? Do whatever you want. Uh, haz, uh, haz lo que quiera. Uh, haz lo que quieras. Not quieres like you expect. Haz lo que quieras. Do, us means the command, do. Do what you may want. Um, it comes up in phrases like, sea lo que sea, be that as it may because we don't know if the situation exists. Um, so, yeah, there. it takes a long time to get used to. For you to actually produce that language would be tough, but for you to listen to it and understand it is the key. One of the videos I previewed this week, 
searching for materials for the various classes is, you know, it may not be essential for you to be able to form that verb when you speak, but when you hear it and recognize, oh, this is what they mean, sometimes that's good enough. Quite often, it might be good enough for you to get by with that. Bien? Okay. Mm -hmm. Vale. Okay. So, I, I, I can I, shut up and give someone else a turn, but I had two other questions in the video. Dos here. más, dos más. No, I, I have pegged time for you to do exactly this. Es buena okay. idea. Okay, so at the time point was about four minutes and 50 seconds. Okay, vale. And bien, bien, yeah, bien. kind of kind of right there or like another half a second. <laughs> and ah. she, she said, me quedan uh, uh, ciento cincuenta pesos. I, I still have left 150 pesos. And what I, ah. what, I, what I want to ask about is, is this sort of like with, with Gustav? But I was surprised that she used quedan rather than you know, Mikado, I I have um, okay. I have left 150 pesos. So I'm kind of asking just about why Kedan, and if it's like with Gustar, where it's the, the the plural of the pesos, did it? Okay, then I get it. It but is I didn't, like I didn't Gustav. Realize, I just didn't realize it's a, that kind of verb. We're going to do this little slip snippet, and and this kind of thing is exactly the kinds of questions I want you to ask. Okay, vale. Uh, we're going to play just this bit of a snippet. Sabe? Mm, buenísimo. It tastes super good. That's what sabe. Sabe here is not the sabe out of no. It's the sabe out of taste. Sabe buenísimo. It tastes really great. Really, really good. Ahora vamos a ir por la verdura. Me quedan. Now we're going to go for veggies. Ah, me quedan. 150 pesos. Me quedan. 150 pesos. I'm going to put it up here. Me quedan. So she's got 50, uh, oh no, 150, 150 pesos. Quedan is conjugated for pesos. Me quedan is a frequent thing to use. It que, quedar in this sense, because quedar is used in a lot of different ways. Quedar in this sense is used in that structure of the gustar verbs and the gustar wannabes. Quedar in this sense means this thing remains to me or maybe to you or to us. So the way we say that in English is, I have this left over. I have these things left. Yeah, I've got five bucks left. I have, yeah. Um, it's the idea of left, all right? And quedar in the sense means these things remain to somebody. And the to somebody is the me. So they remain to me. Me quedan. 150 pesos. Me quedan. So I have, although she's not using tengo, we would say in English, I have 150 pesos left. And that idea is used with the verb quedar, but used as a gustar structure. 150 pesos remain, which is what quedar means, to me. They remain to me. So we conjugate quedan for pesos, plural, like gustan is plural. Me quedan 150 pesos. Bien. Quedar has many, many uses, but when somebody said they have a certain number of things left over, that's a structure they'll use. Perfecto. Y una más, Marcos. Sí. Uh, five minutes and 39 seconds on the yeah. uh, And I think, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. Maybe I was just, had no idea exactly what, what this exactly meant, but... She used the phrase, como vienen de grandes. And I was hmm. just struggling with kind of what that phrase actually meant. Okay. Um, ¿Cómo vienen de grandes? Right there. ¿Cómo vienen de grandes? 
Uh, how did it come big? Uh, yeah. Deme dos. Ah, deme dos. Ah, give me two. Um, she wanted to see the size of it. The ones that come big, you know, instead of like the real skinny, you know, when you go to look for asparag asparagus you, and you get the really skinny ones, like super, super skinny things. And then you get the nice big fat ones. <laughs> yeah. They come big. That's all. I, I, like in, if that was in English, I would have said, you know, how big are they? And uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm not yeah. sure. I, yeah, that's okay. what she's. Yeah, exactly. That's the information she's looking for. But you notice this is a very colloquial, uh, everyday chit chat kind of Spanish of how you would talk to people at a farmer's market, and you know, you 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 start to hear these little structures <laughs> that. Uh, and you may not have used them for a while or heard them for a while. And so, you know, now it, it, it's, this is a, these kind of things are good because they start to review book a book a little by little uh, things that you've heard. And it's like, oh, I may have forgotten about that, but they're actually, you're, you're plugging in use of a whole bunch of different structures. Buenas preguntas. Vale, perfecto. Okay. Otra pregunta. Any other question about that video? This was a really great one for lots of little structures. Nada más? Nothing else there? Okay. Uh, I want to also ask if it was helpful for you to have, and if you did not notice this, you could play mm -hmm. this. If you did not notice that, yeah, go back and read it again. Uh, you can hear them reading the passage as they go along. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, a super general passage. It's talking about Benidorm. Benidorm es una ciudad en, uh, uh, en el país de España. So they're talking about this town or city of Benidorm. Uh, ¿Dónde está? Que, uh, ¿Por qué es importante? ¿Qué tiene la ciudad de Benidorm? And so they just, uh, it's just a very general uh, uh, passage for general reading and understanding uh, information about a place. And you, I, I anticipate because this is an easier level than the video, you would have fewer questions. But if you have a question, do ask. And if you did not notice uh, that they read that for you, you can listen to it and read it at the same time, which is super nice. Uh, this, oh, and this I did not. This, this is the trifecta. You can hear it, you can read it, and if you click on, you can see the translation all oh, right there. See, on see. The screen. See, okay. yeah, it is a trifecta, yeah. Uh, so, like, let's say, por ejemplo, uh, you're kind of thinking, wait a minute, what's that disfrutan? What is that disfrutan? Is that about fruit? Yeah, what is that? You know, if you're puzzled about the verb disfrutar, which would be, yeah, maybe a normal kind of question for folks at your level. Uh, bien, uh, and they highlight for you, Y disfrutan de unas vacaciones divertidas and enjoy from vacations. So you can plug in, oh, disfrutan must mean enjoy. But there, it's like disfrutan de, disfrutan de. It's one of those funny verbs that gets the little word de after it. Disfrutan de, enjoy. And it's talking about a bunch of people they enjoy. That's it. So, yeah, it is a trifecta. Gracias, sí. Uh, and it explains a lot. And because it explains a little more than the video, it's easier to uh, digest all that information. Okay. Vale. Bien? Bien. All good? Mm -hmm. Todo bien? Yeah. Bueno. Entonces, then let's move it on to the topic of pronouns. These pronouns can be kind of a, wow, they can be, a, they're little buggers, aren't they? They're, yeah. yeah. Uh, it is very normal to struggle. Well, and you know, why do we struggle with these? We struggle with these 
And so if you feel like, well, this is kind of hard, do know that you are a normal person. Congratulations to you. You're normal. Uh, uh, where prepositions and pronouns are funny little things that that uh, are used in different ways and the word order becomes different. And then you sit there wondering, well, why do they do that? Because they're different from what we are anticipating mentally uh, in English. Okay. The position of these words will be not what you expect or you're accustomed to in English. So this we're, we're seeing as reflexive, but do know these kinds of rules and this kind of practice, these rules are this, the exact same, whether we are talking about reflexive verbs, which is our bigger umbrella topic, these rules are the same for direct object pronouns, like the lo, la, los, las, right? And they always include me, te, nos. They're the same for the indirect object pronouns, okay? Which are le and les, but then, of course, always including the me, te, nos. The me, te, nos is always the, the common denominator. Me, te, nos is always me, te, nos, no matter what kind of pronoun it's an object pronoun, but, uh, uh, you know, of course, pronouns branch off into different functions. And even though this is about reflexive, these rules pertain to all of this category of object type pronouns that receive action. Vale. Bueno, entonces, un repaso, just as a quick uh, review so we get our mind into the right mindset. In a regular sentence, that means a plain old statement of fact. So when I say regular sentence, if you know, if I were going to get picky, I would say for indicative verbs, uh, yeah, for a, a single verb, indicative verb, but a regular sentence, a plain old sentence that's all coming about something that is happening. Yeah, the word this this is what we have to do in Spanish. The pronoun that is an object pronoun, in this case, a reflexive object, has to be in front of the verb. And we drill this into people because this is a very odd word order for the English speaker. Okay. But by now you're used to that. In front of the verb, in front of the verb, in front of the verb. Me levanto, me siento, nos enojamos, se preocupa, se divierten. So a plain old situation where you've got you're talking about a fact, what is going on, and it's just a one verb thing. Okay. But when we use two verbs together in a phrase, meaning the two verbs are working together to talk about the same kind of action. Yeah. We're not talking about like, I got up, I washed my face, I walked into the kitchen, I talked to my husband. No, not a series of actions, but two related actions. So that means I got two verbs working together in a phrase. When we have situations like that of the two verbs working together, the pronoun now you have a choice of where to put it. It will never be in between those two verbs in the verb phrase. It'll always be up front or tagged onto the end of the second type verb. Okay. Uh, but you do have a choice of where the pronouns, in this case, we're going to look at reflexives, me, te, nos, and se, where those go. So, okay. Uh, los ejemplos, the examples. Me quiero duchar. You learn it as ducharse. But if we change that phrase to not just shower, like I shower in the morning or I shower at night, but we say, I want to shower. I am going to shower. I prefer to shower. Um, even we could say, I like to shower. Yeah. Uh, but a two verb phrase, it's me quiero luchar. Like the first rule, still in front of the conjugated verb, because the conjugated one is the quiero part. Me quiero luchar. But you do have a choice, and you can flip, because it's two verbs working together. You can flip the me 
to tag it on to the end of the infinitive. And when we have just an infinitive, uh, the pronoun, it's a very natural thing to tag that on to the end too. Quiero lucharme. Quiero lucharme. Both of those sentences mean the exact same thing. It's just a different word order where me can go and both are acceptable. Is one more common than the other? Not really. Uh, people will say it as they feel like it. So verb followed by infinitive. Or another situation where we have two verbs working together in a verb phrase is what we call that present progressive, meaning somebody is doing something, the ing structure. And ing in Spanish has uh, a direct counterpart, either for AR verbs, ando, or for ERI verbs, yendo. All right? So, estar, but now you've got a more specific verb, estar, plus what we call the gerund, the ing type verb. And there's still two verbs working together. So once again, the pronoun can't come between those two verbs in the middle, no. It'll still be up front, in front of the first verb, estar, in this case, a very specific verb, or tagged on to the end of the ando, yendo, gerund. So that example is... You are, in this case, brushing your teeth. And instead of using brushing, they use clean. Yeah, washing. Te estás lavando los dientes. Te estás. Te in front of estás, the conjugated verb. And the yendo is a gerund. Okay, and yendo or ando is always that form. Uh, we can tag it on to the end as well. So again, like in this top situation, the bottom one with estar and a gerund is te estás lavando los dientes or estás lavándote los dientes. Now, that second one, lavándote, gets an accent mark. Uh, when you're speaking, that doesn't matter. <laughs> when you're writing it, it matters, okay? If you really want me to get into that at another time, I can, but it's kind of uh, not important for speaking. But do know when it's written, it gets an accent mark. That just means we know we have to punch that ando, ando uh, syllable more. Okay, so it'll follow a similar situation with verb plus infinitive. And we're going to have a similar, uh, the pronoun can flip situation, same kind of flip front or back end of the verb phrase with a star plus a gerund. So these are the two situations, verb plus infinitive, okay, and a star plus the gerund. And I show you what the gerund is, okay. And I say usually a star, there are other verbs besides estar that are sometimes used with that gerund, but this is like 75, 80% the most common one. Okay. Uh, so our examples well, uh, were los invitados se van, a uh, se van a sentar are going to sit down. It is also correct to take the se and tag it on to the end of sentar. Los invitados van a sentarse. Two positions for se, both equally correct. In the uh, estar plus gerund situation, los invitados se están sentando. They are sitting down like right now as we're speaking. Or los invitados se están sentándose. And there we need an accent mark. Not important when you're speaking, because that's normally how you're going to say sentando anyway. Uh, están sentándose. Okay. Bien. Vale. So this, I just wanted you to have an idea of the kinds of verbs that might be verb plus infinitive. Verb plus infinitive. Because many verbs can be in a verb phrase together with verb plus infinitive. Uh, 
poder, can do something, querer, want to do something, ir a, going to do something, meaning not right now, but will soon in the future, volver a, which means to do something again. This one is a little bit tough for people. We'll maybe look at that another time a little more closely. Acabar de, to have just done something, meaning, ooh, just finished it super recently. And tener que, have to do something, okay? Um, so uh, those are the some of the many verbs that might be verb plus infinitive, but you can see there's a big variety of verbs that do that. But Generally, estar is more common with the gerund, so you have a whole bunch of examples there. Okay. A ver. Let's see if we can pop these into the right places. Uh, voy a engrandecer un poquito más. I'm going to try to make that a little bit bigger. Sí, mucho mejor, mucho mejor. Okay, vale. Voy a sentar en este si, uh, sillón. Sillón makes silla bigger and comfy. Yeah. Sillón is an easy chair. Yeah, something that's in your, not at your dinner table <laughs> with a hard back, but in your living room. Voy a sentar en este sillón cómodo. There are two places I can flip the me because I've got voy a sentar, verb plus infinitive. So what are our two places for me? Me voy. me voy, me voy a sentar, bien, me voy a sentar, me voy a sentar en este sillón cómodo, or, voy a sentarme, voy a sentarme, and notice I don't need an accent mark, I just slap the me onto the end of the infinitive, okay, bien, mm -hmm. uh, vale, perfecto. So, in front of the first verb that's conjugated or tagged on to the end of the A-R-E or I-R, what we call the infinitive, the not conjugated verb. No podemos despertar temprano. We can't wake up early becomes, and here we need a nos because we can't. It's either. No nos podemos despertar. No nos podemos despertar, but or, uh, it's also correct to say. No, no podemos despertarnos. No podemos despertarnos. So either way is acceptable. You may hear people use that with either position for the word nos. Acabas de duchar. Did you just shower? Did you just step out of the shower is what you're asking if you ask that question. Te acabas de duchar. Te acabas de duchar. Did you just shower? Or... Acabas de ducharte. Acabas de ducharte. Bien. And it does not matter which order uh, either of those is right. Te acabas de duchar, acabas de ducharte. Perfecto. Okay. Bien. Siguiente, siguiente. Next. Uh, and this is the one we're going to examine this really. Volver a. Volver by itself when I don't pair it up with anything, means to return, to come back. And if you're coming back, you're coming back to someplace you've been before, right? So logically speaking, when we flip this into volver a in an infinitive, it means to do something again. And there are like three different ways to say again in Spanish. This Method of saying again utilizes the verb volver. Uh, so, los chicos vuelven a dormir. The kids are falling asleep again, is what we want to say. Falling asleep again. And the idea of again means they're coming back to do that activity. Yeah? Uh, volver a. Volver a. 
And we need a C because we're talking about Los Chicos. So Los Chicos. Se vuelven. Se vuelven a dormir. Dormir se es fall asleep, not just sleep, but fall asleep. Se vuelven a dormir. They're falling asleep again. Vale. Oh. La otra posición de C es. Vuelven a dormirse. Vuelven a dormirse. Perfecto. Sí. Vuelven a dormirse. Bien. Los, las dos posiciones de C son correctas. Las dos posiciones son correctas. Los adolescentes quieren divertir. The, oh, the teenagers want to have a good time. They want to have a good time. They want to enjoy themselves. We can phrase that as. Se quieren divertir. Okay, this is one way of saying have a good time, enjoy yourself. O quieren divertirse. So the set can flip to either one. Always think of it as the front in front of the engine. <laughs> think of the verb as the engine. Yeah. <laughs> front of the engine of the train. Or it's the caboose tagged onto the end of the train. Okay. The train is the two little <laughs> verbs <laughs> that are working together there, right? Uh, so it's either right up by the engine or tagged onto the caboose at the very, very end. Okay. Tengo que fijar. Uh, fijarse, fijarse, as a reflexive verb, means to notice, pay attention to like, ooh, I'm doing laser focusing on something, right? Uh, tengo que, I have to, tengo que. We need to use a me in there. Me tengo que fijar. Me tengo que fijar en este problema. I got to focus on the, what you're saying is I have to pay attention to this problem. I got to focus on this. Okay. Uh, me tengo que fijar en este problema. Oh, oh, también correcto. Tengo que. Tengo que uh, fijarme. Tengo que fijarme. Tengo you que have, fijarme. Do you have Tengo, to have an A? Ah? No, there's no A. Ah. There's no A. Ah. No existe A. Ah. Tengo okay. que. Tener does not use A. Ah. And you'll notice, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back and look at that when we're done with this whole page. Vale la pena. It is worth it to kind of. Yeah, do we need an a uh, word ah uh, all the time? And the answer to that, the short answer is no, not all the time. Okay, cuando visito a mi hermano, when I visit my brother, uh, puedo quedar en su casa. This quedar is not like the Mark's example of me quedan 150 pesos. I've got 150 left over. No, no, this is quedarse. Not just quedar, to remain, but quedarse, meaning to stay in the terms of lodgings, a living arrangement. To stay with somebody in a living arrangement. Okay. Y a ver, uh, when I visit my brother, I can stay at his house. I can stay. Me puedo quedar. Me puedo quedar. En su casa. I can stay in su casa. Sí. Me puedo quedar en su casa. I can stay at his house. Or I might choose to flip that over and say, puedo. Quedarme. 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 Puedo quedarme en su casa. I can stay at his house. And... So you can see from these little examples that these little me, te, nos, se examples, we have a choice, but we have a choice because I don't have just one conjugated verb by itself. I've got a verb phrase of 
two verbs working together to talk about the same activity. Yeah. Want to do something, can do something, going to do something. Hey, just finished doing something, uh, doing something again, etc. Bien. Okay. Bueno. Alguna pregunta. Does it help for you to see those examples of how both ways? Because mm -hmm. yeah. you kind of you kind of have to be prepared. You know, the difficulty is when you read it, you've got time for your brain to process it and go back and look at it. When somebody's talking at you, boom. Yeah, see, Carrie, I see you shaking your head. Yeah, see, exactly. <laughs> that is exactly right. When somebody's talking at, at you and they're talking at a rate, speaking at a rate that you feel is like 150 miles per hour, because it will feel that way, even though it might not be, but it'll feel that way. Okay. And that's a normal way for you to feel. Um, you got to be prepared for, I may hear either way. And it, it, it's, it's tough to hear, well, they'll say it the way they feel like that at that moment, but that's what it boils down to. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, in a way, you can liken it to this, this situation in English, really, truly proper English will be, will come out when somebody is listening to you speaking English or Tom, Dick, or Harry on the street speaking English. Somebody will say, well, I'm going to give you the directions now. Now, the proper way that people learn is I'm going to give you the directions now. But the way somebody may very well say it, the way the person will hear a normal Tom, Dick, or Harry talking is, I'm going to give you the directions now. And now all of a sudden, what per somebody heard was, I'm going to give you, and it's not what you expected. And suddenly the, you know, all the, the little electrical points in your brain are going, oh, that's not what I learned. <laughs> and it's confusing and intimidating, right? But just know, right? People are going to flip these little pronouns to different positions. So be prepared when you listen to people. Uh, and you're going to have a little training video to listen to for homework this week that where you'll hear somebody kind of doing that. Okay. Marilyn, Mar Mar were you going to talk about the when to use the A? Oh, C, oh, C, 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 C. Okay. So we have... We have this, this little thing, and actually I'm going to highlight it where the ahs are. Where is that little magical word ah? Ooh, I see an ah here. Aquí tenemos a la palabra a. Ah, voy a sentar. Ah, ah, vuelven a dormir. Mm. Okay. Um, we need that little word ah. Why? Well, because, oh, how helpful. Um, some verbs, and you just need to get a feel. You can try to memorize the whole list. Uh, I'll try to find a list for you. <laughs> Certain verbs, when you pair it up with a second verb, will use ah. And you just have to know which ones those are. I think it is more helpful for you to know, uh, like the most common ones, uh, but you get used to hearing that pattern so that it becomes natural. Okay. Uh, ir needs the verb a. Volver, when I pair it up with a second verb, now changes from return, come back, to do it again. And to get the do it again meeting, it needs that little word, ah. Okay. I can just say, vuelven pronto. They're coming back soon. But I'm not, vuelven is not paired up with a second verb. Vuelven a llegar pronto. They're, they are arriving again soon. Okay. Uh, vuelven a dormir. Se. They're, uh, they're, sleeping, they're falling asleep again. Volver a needs an a, voy a needs an a, but look at what happens. Poder 
needs no little word at all between itself. It is one of the verbs that needs nothing else after that that second verb. Nothing else needed. Uh, similarly, querer paired up with a second verb needs no little word at all. Okay. Uh, sometimes the word you need is not ah at all. Tener does not use ah. Tener uses que to say have to. Obligation. Uh, tengo que decirles. I have to tell you guys. Tengo que irme. I got to leave. I have to get out of here. Tengo que llamar. Um, uh, uh, tengo que la, uh, llamar a la compañía. I have to call. Tener just needs que. Why? Because it is tener. How how unhelpful is that? But yeah. And, and. Acabar. Acabar by itself without a second verb means to finish. End. Put, put a period on it. Yeah. Now finish something up. But when I use acabar to indicate the idea of just did this, meaning, ooh, I finished uh, five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, half an hour ago. Okay. Just did it. Uh, it acabar is a verb that needs not a, not que, but this word de. And you just need to know that acabar uses de. So bottom line, some verbs need nothing at all between first verb and infinitive. Some need a, some need de, some need que. Um, and you just have to know, but from context, if you get used to the patterns, you'll just naturally know it. I will try to find a list of some, but the list thing can be daunting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the list thing might have loads of verbs that you personally don't use that much. Mm -hmm. So the important thing when I search out and include in the email for the list, <laughs> it, the important thing to know is, I'm not going to need these all. So maybe you go down the list. You say, oh, I use this a lot. Oh, I expect I would hear this a lot and take out only those. Mm -hmm. And the others, you just say, well, it's something to keep in my back pocket. I, I might hear it sometimes, but it won't be in 75% of my con conversation. You know, ir a comes up a lot. Yeah. Uh, uh, tener que comes up a lot. Certain things happen. They are higher frequency. Okay. And the little thing of, of prepositions is a, a daunting, difficult thing. Prepositions are hard words to master. Do know that um, in some cases it not be it may not be a big deal for you to be understood if you miss that little word ah but it will sound off they'll probably still get what you mean but it will sound a little funny to them okay hey, marilyn i have like a really dumb basic question it's not dumb <laughs> But I mean, I guess this it has never really gotten into my head from before when we talked about reflexes and now, and, and I look at this last page that we just looked at and I can do all of it, but I just don't get why reflexives. Like, why can't we just say voy a sentar and este se yan gomoro? Why do we, I mean, if it's reflexive, then that sentence can't exist. So, um, so I, I, oh, I it hasn't gotten in my head. Let's, you know, you're right that this is a basic question, but it's not a dumb question. Very seldom are any, very seldom is there a dumb question. Well, it's just that I have never, it just doesn't want to seem to get into my head about reflexes. This, like, I know that some words... Like the char is a reflexive and it's not a reflexive, right? 
It can be reflexive. Uh, duchar, you almost never hear duchar. And I'm going to say duchar is an almost special kind of verb in that I never in my life have heard duchar used without it being. I guess that was a bad example because. Now, and, even... but, and let's also think of this. How long have showers been in existence? Were showers around when Spanish was created? Or when was Spanish was created? And Spanish was developing in the year 1100. Did anybody have a shower? <laughs> if they stood under a waterfall, yeah. <laughs> Indoor plumbing, not so much. People took baths. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, ducharse is kind of special. Uh, um, so you, do it, that... you do it to your body and you're in there on your own and it's reflexive, like washing your hands. But certain verbs, certain verbs. So, okay, reflexives. Uh, and this kind of goes to a core question, which is a really good one, Carrie. Uh, the way reflexives are first taught to the beginning student are, it's an action that the person does, and the person also receives that the benefit of that action. Right. The person is both the doer and the receiver. Okay. But English doesn't have a great... What the, the great comparison is I see myself in the mirror, mm -hmm. but we don't always in English include this exact word myself when we speak. Oh, I talk to myself because I'm losing my marbles. <laughs> he, hey, that guy, he's talking to himself and he's not quite there. Yeah. Yes, that's her. And he talks to himself and we actually say the word himself. But how many times do you say, I am washing my own hands? Do you just say I'm washing up or do you say I'm washing my hands or do you say I am washing myself? How many people say I'm washing myself? Is it unheard of? No. But do you say it a lot? Not really. So the... Uh, Actually inserting the word myself doesn't happen all that time, all that much, and not all the time, right? Um, um, so it's taught in that idea of I do the action and I also receive it, okay? But, uh, 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 and sometimes it makes a difference. So let's take a look at sentar, this first one. Sentar does have a meaning with no se, but kind of specific. Sentar means to seat. So an usher may seat someone. A maitre d' may seat someone, meaning showing them to their specific place where they're going to park their carcass. Yeah. Um, and you may not have a need to actually use sentar in the non-reflexive way very much. Because we don't always talk about going to a place where somebody shows you to an appointed area. But sentar say we use a lot. Sit down. He's going to sit down. Let's sit down. Hey, don't, don't sit there. They just painted that bench. <laughs> so sentar say is a higher frequency use. Sentar, without the say, exists, but kind of limited in its usage, unless you work in the restaurant or hospitality mm -hmm. industry, okay? Uh, despertar can be used pretty frequently by itself or as a reflexive. Despertar set means your own body is doing this to itself, waking itself up. But despertar without the se means some external person or thing is waking you. Ah, so it is useful to know that. Uh, por ejemplo, hay los, mi, mi vecino tiene cuatro perros, y es la verdad. Sí, en este caso es la pura verdad. This is really true. Mi vecino tiene cuatro uh, perros y uh, por la mañana, 
por la mañana, muchas veces los perros me despiertan, me despiertan. They wake me. To me, they're doing the waking. My body isn't just coming up when it wants to, to a state of being awake. They are rudely awakening me. Me despiertan. They wake me up. Okay? Vale. So, uh, that, uh, duchar, kind of special, because, you know, in old and antiquity, people didn't have showers. Okay. Uh, um, um, ba, 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 ba. Okay. Now, let's take a look at dormir and dormirse. Some verbs are reflexive, not really specifically because the person both does and receives the action, but English will use like an extra little preposition, like dormirse, to fall asleep. Dormir, sleep. Dormirse, fall asleep. Not because, no, I, I sleep myself. No. <laughs> so sometimes reflexives mean I do it and I receive the action. Some reflexives carry a special little preposition in English. Dormirse, to fall asleep. O, por ejemplo, caerse, to fall down. Yeah. Uh, uh, bajarse is to get down out of a vehicle. Subirse is to get into a vehicle, like a car or a bus. Nos subimos al autos. We're getting on the bus. We're getting into the bus. We step up to get inside of the bus is nos subimos al, uh, al autobús. So some reflexive verbs get a little extra like preposition in English. And just by hearing them used, you gradually have to learn those. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to be able, unless you're some kind of Mensa person, which I am not, uh, you're not just going to look at a list and memorize them and remember them all. Yeah, yeah, you'll hear it used here and there, here and there. Okay. Some verbs just are reflexive, just are, and you just have to get used to it. Like ducharse, it just is. Like uh, 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 divertirse, it just kind of is. You may hear divertir used without the se, but again, it'll be like a verb like gustar. It'll be that kind of thing. Uh, um, uh, Divertirse just is have a good time. Uh, literally in the Spanish way of thinking, to divert yourself, meaning you're amusing yourself, you're having a good time. But we don't think of it that way. We don't think of that activity that way in English. So the translation is, kind of, is clunky. Mm -hmm. You just have to get used to these. So reflexes fall in the categories of I really do the action to myself, like lavarse las manos, part of my body, or, well, okay, it has a special little, like, preposition attached to it in English, or I just got to get used to, this verb is just reflexive, it doesn't, in the term of, I do it to myself, wouldn't translate in English, but it just is reflexive, and I have to get used to it. It's kind of a big question, abstract question, Carrie. But uh, e paciencia, patience is all I can tell you is that it will not naturally come to you if you try to pressure yourself to learn a big list. Mm -hmm. But just get used to, oh, I hear him using it that way. I hear a story with them using it that way, which is why you get so many videos because it takes a while to get used to it. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I would necessarily be able to always, it off the cuff, just know when to use Off the cuff too. is tough. It, it is experience, the number of hours of exposure you have listening to stories in a variety of settings. Yeah. 
And even when you have like, I want a drill on a piece of paper and da, 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 but you won't hear those examples all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just have mm-hmm. to get it. You have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and going with the flow of uh, off the cuff. Sadly, <laughs> the way language kind of works. Gracias. <laughs> okay. De nada. But it is worth it for us to kind of go off on the tangent a little bit sometimes and kind of let that sink in because it may have sunk in it. Sometimes you need to hear it a bunch of times or hear it a bunch of different ways for it to kind of sink in a little bit more. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, We have the one, uh, we had many examples here with verb plus infinitive, A-R-E-R-I-R type verb. We're going to take a look next with still a verb phrase, two verbs working together, but instead of the infinitive format, it's going to be the ing, ando, yendo format. But the same kind of rule is going to apply. And that kind of rule is, it'll be the front part of the engine of the train right up front in front of the verb, like you learned first time or tagged on to the end, the caboose at the end of the train, tagged on to the ando yendo, okay? And both of those will be correct. And this is estar y gerundio, estar with gerund. That means present progressive. And it is a very specific thing. It means somebody is doing something and it means in real time. It is happening as we speak. That is how... Spanish, the language, uses that. That's the context in which we use that structure. Okay. A ver. Estamos vistiendo con mucha prisa. Con mucha prisa means very quickly. Con mucha prisa means hurry up. (laughs) Doing it fast. Okay. Estamos vistiendo. Vestirse means to get dressed. And notice in English we say get dressed. We don't, we don't phrase it very much as you dress yourself. That's what it means. You dress yourself, meaning you have no valet. You are not some rich, uh, you're not out of Downton Abbey with a valet to put on your tie and all that. Nobody lives that way anymore. Okay. Vestirse means to get dress. And we need that word get in English to convey that idea. So we're going to put the nos here. We can plug it in front of the conjugated verb, or we're going to tag it on to the end caboose of the verb phrase. Uh, what do we do with nos? Nos estamos. Estamos diciendo nos. Nos estamos vistiendo. Uh, con mucha prisa. Uh, that part stays the same, yeah? Nos estamos vistiendo o oh, Oh, también correcto. Also correct. Estamos vistiéndonos. Vistiéndonos. Estamos vistiéndonos. So again, here the nos is the caboose on the end of vistiendo. And yes, it has a little accent mark when you're speaking. It doesn't matter. (laughs) Okay. Uh, You will see that in in writing. Estamos vistiéndonos. Okay. Vale. Bueno. A ver. El jefe está quejando. Quejarse. You will very seldom hear quejar by itself, not reflexive. Quejarse means to complain. Here's one of those verbs. It, you almost always hear this reflexive. Almost always. Okay. Quejarse. The, the boss is complaining about the new employee. El jefe. Se está. Se está. Se está quejando quejando del nuevo empleado about the new employee, okay? But I can swing the se on to become the caboose on the end of the verb phrase, okay? And in that case, it will sound like this. Está quejándose. Está quejándose. Y los dos son correctos. The two of those are correct. It's still a verb phrase. Just instead of having an infinitive, I've got the ando yendo kind of format. Okay. Se está quejando, está quejándose. 
Igual. Same thing. Same thing. And this quejar se is a very good example of a verb. You almost you almost always hear that as only quejarse. And nobody would say, I complain to myself. No. Yeah, it's not that traditional explanation of I do it to myself. It's just I'm complaining. That's what the verb quejarse means. Espera is wait. I'm putting on my shoes. Meaning everybody else is out the door and you're sitting there barefoot trying to get them on your feet. Ponerse means to put something on yourself, on your body, a piece of clothing or sunscreen or perfume or bug spray, <laughs> anything you put on your body. Me estoy poniendo. Me estoy poniendo los zapatos. I'm putting my shoes on. I'm putting my shoes on. Pero también, but also we can tag it on to the end. What will it sound like? To tag it on to the end of the, be the caboose. Estoy poniéndome. Estoy poniéndome. Los zapatos. Los zapatos. Estoy poniéndome los zapatos. Means the same thing, just as fine, just as correct. Me estoy poniendo, estoy poniéndome. Perfecto. Here we've got that nice lavarse, wash a part of your body, wash your hands, okay? Mi mamá está lavando las manos. Mom is washing her hands. Mi mamá se está, se está lavando, se está lavando las manos, se está lavando las manos. Oh, también correcto. Está Lavándose. Lavándose. Está lavándose las manos. Son iguales. These two phrases mean the exact same thing. Se is correct in both positions. Se está lavando, está lavándose. Equivalentes, equivalent. Ok. Ya estás recuperando. Ah, recuperarse is to recuperate. Your body is getting over something, an injury, an illness, uh, <laughs> depression, <laughs> heat. Oh, heat stress. See, mm -hmm. are, are you recovering? Uh, bueno, ya, we'll still stay there. Ya. Ya te está recuperando. Ya te estás recuperando. Perfecto. O mm -hmm. también igual a uh, ya estás, estás recuperándote. Recuperándote. Bien, sí, bien. Ya estás recuperándote, recuperándote. And wow, that is a long word, so mm -hmm. kind of a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> sí. Is. Yeah, it's a very long word. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, asustar means to scare. Asustarse is to get scared, to be frightened. It's like a state of mind, right? Uh, rattlesnakes might scare me. They do the scaring to me. The verb will be different there. But if I myself get scared, if I get into this state, it's asustarse, asustarse. So uh, the kids are getting scared of this thunder. Los niños. Están. Se están asustándose. Asustando, mm -hmm. and se está asustando. Se estás asustando. They're getting scared. Okay. Bien. And you're only going to say this when, oh, you're right at the power punch packing part of a thunderstorm, right? And the kids are running around, running under the bed, throwing the uh, sheets over their head. Uh, or, están asustando. Oh. 
asustándose. Bien, un acento. Bien. So, there are the two positions. Asustarse means to get scared. Me asusto cuando hay una tormenta. I get scared when there is a storm. Me asusta, uh, or me asusto, me asusto cuando, uh, cuando veo un, uh, un accidente grave. I get scared when I see a bad accident. Bien. Uh, okay. Asustarse, to get scared, meaning you work yourself up into a state. Okay, again, these are two verbs working together. And instead of being verb plus infinitive, it is estar plus an ing verb, but the same thing. And notice, para que sepan, just so you know, because most of you are speaking this, you're not writing this stuff out. When we write it, it needs an accent mark, okay? And that is because, just so you know why that happens, it is because I am tagging on a whole new syllable. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, I have to say, ooh, we stress a syllable. We give it more punch in Spanish, depending on whatever the last letter of the word is. And once I tag on the word nos, or se, or me, once I tag on that syllable, the last letter, when it is a vowel, 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 or the letter N or S, the rules kick in. And the rule is a word that ends in a vowel or N or S will naturally stress the second to last syllable. But I don't want that core word of Vistiendo to sound like vistiendo, vistiendo. No es natural. That's changing the whole way the word sounds. And when I tag on that extra syllable, uh, it, the rule says, hey, punch the second to last syllable. And because I'm not doing that, it's like, no, that's not the way the word sounds. I put the accent mark where I do naturally punch that to make it sound the way it's supposed to sound. That's all you have to know. Okay. Vale, bien? Good? Okay. Mm -hmm. Alguna pregunta? Any kind of question? So the snippet we have is, when can say flip around and two things are both correct? When we have a two verb kind of phrase. Okay, and we have those two situations. Present progressive is doing and verb plus infinitive. Okay, but we're going to look next week at another situation where the reflexive pronoun, now you won't have an option. Mm. Next week's situation, we want to preview this a little bit. Uh, next week's situation is what happens with commands. Commands are not like the two verb, verb phrase where you get a choice. With commands, there are very specific rules and you can only put the pronoun in one place, but the kind of command it is makes a difference. Oh, shoot. Okay. The kind of command is only going to be this simple. It's a go do it. Command, go do it, is an affirmative command. Yeah. Eat your vegetables. Sweep the garage. Hey, start the car up. These are all commands. And, and I will tell you in English, most English speakers don't think of these as commands, but they are commands, and we'll talk about why they are commands. Uh, 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 wash the dishes. Flush the toilet. <laughs> It's a command. Wash your hands. Stand up. 
sit down, wake up. Those are all commands and they are affirmative commands. They're go do it. They mean, I want you to do it. And that's why we call them affirmative. But there are also negative commands like, oh, don't get up. Like, don't watch the TV, right? Turn off the TV is a command, but it's an affirmative command. Don't watch the TV is a negative command. And in Spanish, negative commands fall into one category, but affirmative commands fall into a different category. So this is how it's going to work. Don't do it commands. Follow the same formula you first learned for plain old verbs. Okay. Plain old verbs were me levanto, I'm getting up. Me ducho, I'm taking a shower. Me lavo las manos, I'm washing my hands. Plain old verbs that say I am doing or somebody else is doing this action. That rule that you used for that situation kicks in with negative commands. It'll be no, because it's got to be a negative command, plus a pronoun, plus a verb. Now, we're going to look at some examples of that, and we're going to look at examples with reflexives. Por ejemplo, for example, uh, you tell somebody, uh, oh, don't sit down there. Don't sit down there. That chair is broken. Don't sit down. They just painted that. Don't sit down. It is 115 degrees. Do not sit on that metal bench. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. So what happens to this verb, sentarse, when we make it a command? Let's take a look. At, and Mark, this is going to start to get into that thing you were talking about. Let's say I'm talking to somebody in tu format. Okay. Uh, the polite, or excuse me, the, the, the familiar, the buddy, you. Don't sit down becomes this. No. Te sientes. No te sientes. Wow, don't sit down. It is 115. Your skin is going to stick to that metal bench and peel right off. It's going to hurt. No te sientes. And you'll notice Sentarse is an AR verb, but ooh, a negative command is going to look like, ah, does that sound right? It doesn't, but it is right. No, se, no, no te sientes. No te sientes. If you said it to usted, Tom, Dick, or Harry, you don't know their name. Just random, random old grandma ready to sit down on the bench. And you don't want poor grandma to have her skin permanently sticking to the metal surface. No se siente. No se siente. Don't sit down. That's a negative reflexive command. No se siente. No se siente. And you will notice this thing happening. Negative commands will get what looks like a wrong vowel. Uh, what that means is a negative command gets an opposite vowel. The opposite ending that you expected. That's all you really need to know right now. Or let's say you want to give a command to ustedes, you guys, more than one. You don't want your little grandkid and his or her three friends to sit down on that metal seat in 115 degree heat because you know as little kids they're going to scream once they do that. And you're talking to a whole bunch of them. So an ustedes command will look like this. No se siente. But again, though, it'll have an N at the end, like you would expect for ustedes, but an opposite vowel. That's all you need to know. 
Those are commands. Negative commands do a certain thing with the verb, but the pronoun thing is what we're focusing on. Yeah. Negative, uh, negative commands are like plain old single by themselves verbs that you first learned in the very first rule. We just need the no, now a pronoun in front of the verb. Boom. Okay. I am going to give you this week a bunch of things to practice. I'll give you a little video, uh, and it'll be only a snippet of a video that'll show you, or, well, it might be a whole, I, I have to see which one is the best video. Uh, but uh, no, so that we know it's a negative command. And then we're going to stick in our pronoun and then the command. And I'm going to give you the command so you don't have to do the mental gymnastics of what do I do with this command? So we only are focusing on the position of the pronoun. So you will not have to focus on this part, the verb form itself, just where the me, te, nos, or se goes. That's all you have to focus on. Okay, so negative commands fall into this one camp, but affirmative commands, okay, uh, will do something different. Affirmative commands must, must, no choice, must attach. Again, they become the caboose. They can only do one thing. They can only attach to the end of the command. So let's also take sentarse. Sentarse. Let's take that same verb again. Uh, if you are giving somebody an affirmative command, it now we're not saying, hey, don't sit down. We're saying, hey, sit down. You're being polite to somebody, right? They come into your house. Ah, sit down. Sit down, okay? Uh, for a tu command, siéntate. Have a seat. Siéntate. Sit down. Okay. Mm. What if it's somebody that they're an older person you have to show respect to? You have to use usted. You can't use tú. Okay. It'll look like this. Siéntese. Have a seat, sir, ma'am. Siéntese, por favor. Siéntese. What if it's a whole bunch? You tell your grandchild and all their little three, four friends who came in from the pool, hey, kids, time to eat lunch. Hey, kids, sit down. And you're talking to more than one kid. Siéntense. For affirmative commands, we have to tag on that pronoun to the end of the command. And you don't get a choice. It must go there. Okay. So what you're going to get this coming week will be uh, a series of uh, examples. You're going to get a little video to reinforce that and give you lots and lots and lots of examples. Uh, the, depending, on, depending on which video I deem will be the best to see that it may be uh, uh, using more than just reflexives. It may be using, you know, many kinds of pronouns. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can find one that just does reflexives. But Mar commands Mar are a different thing. See. Mar I, I guess you're trying to hold this for next week, but I'm just dying and want to try to okay. avoid flipping back <laughs> through two inches of paper from, you know, a year and a half of working with you. <laughs> so the the two form here has the correct the correct for the for the AR verb, but yes. the others but the others don't. So can you give us the thirty second summary of yes when you switch there? Okay, two commands: affirmative. It'll sound like the two verb, but you get rid of the s. Yeah. Uh, uh, in general. Okay. Uh, so instead of sientas with an S at the end, you get rid of the S. That's all. Yeah. An affirmative command. Um, for 30 seconds, 
for usted and ustedes commands, they must use the opposite vowel from what that infinitive would indicate. AR verbs use e. AR, uh, ER, IR verbs use a. Opposite vowel. Thanks, All the I'll, time. I'll be, I'll be able to sleep tonight now. Usted and ustedes <laughs> commands, be they affirmative, go do it, or negative, don't do it. Usted commands always do the same thing. They always use the opposite vowel. Two commands are an odd thing. Two commands, if they're affirmative, just say get rid of the S. But two commands that are negative will say, I want to do what the usted and ustedes forms do. I'm going to take opposite vowel and I'm going to bring the S back. So for the purpose of your practice, I will give you the commands because I don't want you going through the mental gymnastics of how do I form this command? Because for two, it becomes a mental gymnastics thing. Yeah. So I'm, what's going to happen is I'm going to put them in a category in, in format. See? Could, could you give us like a one page? And I'm, you probably did, you know, back a year or whatever ago, but could you give us a one page summary of that? That 30 second sí. summary you just gave us? Sí, see, sí. yes. Uh, and in your practice, the, the 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 commands will be in the form they need to be. All you need to do is to figure out where does the pronoun go. But yes. Okay. I'll give you those two things. Yeah. So why are we doing this? Because sadly, a lot of times these reflexives wind up being in commands. And where those little pronouns go. It moves around, doesn't it? How confusing is that? So we need to be prepared for different situations. You will hear people flipping those pronouns to different places. So we want to be mentally prepared for, are they telling me to do something? Mm -hmm. I'll give you another quick example. Here's another quick example that if you're on a tour with a tour guide, you could hear this. Whoop, perdón. Ay, a ver. Un momentito. Get my act together. Un ejemplo. Un ejemplo muy típico. A very typical example. Uh, here is a verb you hear a lot on a tour. Because the tour guide points. Hey, pay attention to that. Take a look at that. And a verb they may very well use is fijarse, because what they're telling you is take your eyeballs and fix them on that spot I'm pointing to right now. Notice this. Notice this. Notice where those bathrooms are, people. <laughs> or oh, look at this beautiful structure. I'm Oh, notice this particularly beautiful example of this piece of art. Fijarse is a verb that they'll use when they're pointing something out to you. And they're saying, hey, take a look at this, people, right? If they're talking to one of you, it'll be fijate. Hey, notice this. Fijate. If they're talking to, uh, very super polite, fijese. Or more likely, they're talking to a whole group of tourists and they're they're carting you around a, a cathedral, a museum, someplace where they want you to notice stuff in the room. Fíjense. Mm -hmm. Teachers use this a lot. Teachers talking to the whole class, class, they'll say, hey, you kids, look at the board. Yeah, remember being in class? Kids, look at the board. Fíjense. En la pizarra. Fíjense en la pizarra. Hey, look at the board. <laughs> Teacher talking to all the kids in the class. Fíjense en la pizarra. Put your eyeballs on the board, kids, and quit sleeping. <laughs> Fíjense. Yeah. So you may hear it. Yeah. 
even somebody gives you directions and they say, ooh, ooh, hey, notice, pay attention to that, that traffic light. That's the one where you got to turn. Yeah. They can say, en el semáforo, hey, pay attention to that traffic light. Yeah. Uh, it's a reflexive verb. Yeah. So you'll get examples, but I will give you the down and dirty 30 second uh, example of how that works. Okay. But do notice that commands are a special thing. And a lot of English speakers don't notice when they're using a command, mainly because in English, our commands are just the verb and they never change into a different form. Mm -hmm. you know, when you say look, wash, clean, eat, drink, uh, the verb never changes in English. And so we, in Engl as English speakers, we don't even think, is this a command? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and it makes us think harder about, oh, I'm telling somebody to do something. It's got to be in a form. That's one of the difficult things with language. Mm -hmm. Ace ways. Okay, vale. Uh, you get a fun video just for fun, uh, and you'll get uh, a little uh, instructional video that'll talk about uh, pronoun placement with commands. And mm, eso es, that's it. Bien? Okay? Vale? Bien. Perfecto, perfecto. Okay. Uh, registration ongoing, just to say for a reminder, registration ongoing for fall season. Now that we're almost in August, it doesn't feel so off into the future. <laughs> Telling people in July is like uh, sign up for September sounds weird. August, it doesn't sound as weird. Okay. Uh, y eso es bien bueno y cuídense mucho take care